Ukrainian President Zelensky held frank conversations with his European counterparts and NATO allies about the need to get behind his victory plan. But will the West eventually regret not heeding his calls? For the Europe conversation, I catch up with Lithuanian Defence Minister Lorinas Kaciunas. Well, Minister Lorinas Kaciunas, Minister of Defence for Lithuania, thanks very much for joining us on this special uh, event. Great pleasure. Uh, this uh, NATO Defence Minister's meeting. We're here in NATO studios for the Europe conversation on Euronews. Um, it has been a momentous week uh, in Brussels. President Zelensky was at the European Council. He was here briefing you all on his victory plan. What is your reaction to it? Well, very positive reaction. It was good what we have planned. Uh, of course, in the plan, there are many important details. So first uh, moment which I should mention, you know, Lithuania always supported Ukraine's invitation into the NATO. Mm. Because our, in our uh, understanding, you cannot send the message to Russia that we have at least informal veto power on NATO enlargement. It's the biggest mistake. Ukrainian nation, which fights for their independence, but also fights for our security, deserves uh, you know, determination right, which organization, which community to choose for the future, for their children, for, you know, for the generations. So that's why invitation is not membership, mm. but it's a point of no return. It's irreversibility. So I think we can do this uh, move, at least invitation. I mean, there's more than just hesitancy around this invitation to NATO for Ukraine, because what they were given was this, quote, indestructible bridge towards membership, but not an invitation. The United States is not too keen, and countries like Slovakia and Hungary are actively hostile to yeah. that. Yeah, we know, but, uh, you know, we need to find a comprom compromise formulation, formula, for formula. But, uh, you know, uh, I think it's a question, first of all, for our big allies, mm. you know, uh, because just wordings about irreversibility, bridges, sorry, is not working. Mm. We need actions. If we will not make actions, uh, you know, I remember the story the, before the, before the full-scale war. In 2017, 2018, after Crimea and after Donbass, uh, we Baltics always said, give more weapons to Ukraine, for deterrence. If Ukraine will be strong, Russia will be deterred. And we heard a lot of voices from our friends. Look, if you will give a weapons to Ukraine, it will escalate. Mm. It will provoke. And we gave not enough for them. And you see what happened. Doing nothing is escalatory. Thinking what you, you know, uh, your, your support to Ukraine can escalate situation, it's a mistake. And I hope we, you know, we know we will we will understand our mistakes. Well, what about the hesitancy then from the United States, from the UK, in relation to long-range weapons into Russian territory? And uh, Chancellor Scholz of Germany point blank ruling it out ever. Yeah, I understand there are internal things. We are democracies. We have elections. Russia does not have elections. It's fake elections. So to retain regimes are. Uh, can be effective uh, in some kind of decision making. We are depending on cycles, we are depending on societal approaches, and you know what's happening in some Western societies. Rising for right, talking about f free, uh, peace, not even thinking what does it mean peace under these conditions which is now exist. It will be unjust peace, which will lead to another war in the near, near future. So I understand that kind of things. That's why I can explain why some politicians are not decisive uh, enough. But we will invest into Ukraine defense when we see now what Ukrainian companies can produce also long-range strike capabilities. Uh, ballistical things, uh, very effective drones who can hit long-range targets and uh, even uh, quite resilient on radio electronic warfare. So we will invest into Ukraine for their production 
and this production will uh, solve this red line problem because it will be Ukrainian uh, uh, weapons. Yeah, but we're talking about now. I mean, the victory uh, yes. plan is out a few weeks now and yeah. um, we haven't really heard much of a response from Ukrainian allies. I mean, Vladimir Zelensky went several weeks ago to the United States. When you talk about election cycles, are you saying that perhaps after the US election, because the UK doesn't have an election cycle anymore, yeah. um, we know that potentially Germany might be under domestic pressure, but this is always going to be the case. And Always. Ukraine needs the weapons now. So, yeah. what's the solution? You know, I, I still think that you know, American uh, elections is crucial, not only for Americans but for the whole uh, world, especially Western world. And, and intentionally, you can feel from all allies that we are looking now to the November and uh, waiting for that. What will happen? Because it can change the trajectory. Maybe it will not change, but it's uncertainty which creates. Uh, zone now for passive moves. We are too passive now. Because are you afraid that you um, might incite uh, some disinformation in the United States from Trump's fans who tend to be uh, much less supportive of Ukraine? Is that the fear? And are you fearing then if, if Trump and Vance do become, or go to the White House that Ukraine is in trouble? Lithuania will do what we need to do. But the United States yes. is, is, I mean, a, vital. A vital, absolutely. Because if without the United States, you cannot change the trajectory of war. Mm. So it means the uh, United States should be uh, in the boat, not out of the boat, you yeah. know. So uh, I'm, I'm not apocalyptic on Trump. I mean, we need to work uh, with all administrations, uh, Republican, Democrat, in any case. But it still creates uncertainty. You know, because we just hear about some kind of peace talks, negotiations. We will solve everything fast. But, you know, uh, when you go deeper into details, you lack the uh, evidence and the confident uh, uh, decisions could, could assure, assure you what this uh, peace, possible peace, will be uh, for granted, I mean, you know. But at the same time, there is major escalation with the news from Ukrainian um, services that say that Russia is training, or North Korea is training 10,000 soldiers for Ukrainian territory to fight for Russia, which Zelensky said during the week was a step towards a new world war. So, you know, the, there is obviously urgency to end this war. Uh, you know... Um I would say on Korean participation, of course, Iran, Korea is a big factor now supporting Russia. Uh, of course, Chinese factor is even more important because it led uh, Russia to overcome all technological sanctions. It's important for equipment and uh, weapons, uh, which Russia still uh, produce. Uh, if you look at Korean, I would say, you know, the human resources was not never for Russia problem. Much more bigger problem is ammunition and uh, sophisticated or more or less weapons. So I would say much more bigger problem is Korean weapons in against Ukraine, not uh, ten thousand something, uh, you know, uh, people. Uh, because you know you can find another people if you need, you know. Mm -hmm. So I would say I would say yes, of course, it's a sign of Korean participation. I mean, of of of, of his dictatorship participation. But if if you look uh, more more deeper, much bigger problem is weapons and ammunition. Uh, drones from Iran and so on. You have said that NATO should shoot down Russian drones that fly into NATO airspace. A lot of uh, NATO allies would say that's a provocation that could lead to a, a greater escalation and sometimes it may not be proportionate. Just explain why you think that's a good idea. Uh, you know, every NATO country has the right to self-defence. So one thing is detection of a drone, another is killing the drone. Soft kill is when you jam it, hard kill when you shoot it. So if it's in your territory, of course you need to apply a proportional principle. If a drone is in the forest going, maybe it's not so risky to let him go down. But if it goes to your bordering city somewhere, which can harm your civilian life, you should need to shoot. It's not a pro escalatory, it's defense. And uh, we need to be more on active defense. This is a problem because Russia knows what alliance is defensive alliance. It will be always so. But this defensive alliance could be much more active, reacting in some kind of uh, situations. Because if you will not react, Russia will push this line further and further. And we will have a problem then. 
Just final question, um, because you mentioned that the Baltic countries in particular have warned the West about this back in 2008, 2014 and so on, and very little was done in the name of de-escalation. Do you think in a few years' time we'll look back at this and say, we really messed up, we should have given them all of the weapons at the start, and, and uh, what impact do you think it's going to have? You know, a simple thing, Ronald Reagan, strength, a peace through strength, the, the formula which is classic, Russia is not attacking the strong. When you are strong, Russia is not attacking. The simple as that. Russia respects when you are strong. So that's why if you want to peace with Russia, you need to have military muscles. You need to be military strong to have a peace. It's the only thing. And we do not understand that, hope till now. Is it frustrating for you then when you're with your NATO allies, in particular Hungary and Slovakia, Oh, it's a different story, yes. But tell us a little bit about that. <laughs> you know, because you, you, we see uh, Robert Fico saying that, and well, defending Moscow, essentially, and criticising his own allies, who are saying, he's saying, essentially, they're warmongers. Yeah. Mm. Article 5 is quite flexible. I mean, not all countries should support uh, if our supports you and makes a decision to go for, for help, military help. So it's a good thing. But yes, we have a problems when some countries, which we call allies, in their behavior, in their mindset, works not as the allies. And it's a problem. And they are a security threat? I would not call them security threat. Uh, but, you know, if you ask, do we trust? It's uh, questionable. Orban and Fico. You know, I don't want to go to the personalities. Okay. You know, but uh, but I think we need to we need to be, I would say, more frank with them sometimes. Okay, Minister for Defence for Lithuania, Lorinas Kachunas, thank you very much for joining Thanks us so on much. the Europe conversation here at NATO. Thank you.